Okay, in this video, we are going to do a bunch of things. We're gonna graph a curve in space. We're gonna put a point on the curve and move it around. We're gonna look at the radius vector from the origin to our point. We're gonna look at a tangent vector at our point, and then we're gonna add a tangent line um, to the curve at the point that we created. So that's a lot of stuff. And we're gonna do it all in GeoGebra 3D. So right now I'm at GeoGebra.org. I'm also in Firefox. Usually I do these videos in Chrome, but for some reason Chrome is not showing, um, like when I define a point, it's not showing that anymore uh, in, the, in the algebra description. So hopefully that gets fixed at some point, but uh, I'm gonna use Firefox. So I need 3D graphing and you click it, it opens a new window. So you can go back here if you want more windows, but we're gonna start 3D graphing. And uh, I don't really like this plane, so I'm gonna right click or two finger click and just uh, uncheck show plane. And so this is our 3D space that we're gonna deal with. And first thing, I'm gonna plot a curve. So over here, I've clicked and I'm gonna type curve. And you can see it's telling me what to do. I want 3D, so I need expression, expression, expression. Parameter variable, start value, end value. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do cosine of 2t. And then move out of that parentheses, comma, uh, t over 2. And then move out of that denominator, and comma, sine of 3t. And then out of that parentheses, and comma, uh, t is my variable, and then I want to start at negative 3 pi and end at 3 pi. And I'm going to press enter, and you can see a couple of things. Well, one, you can see the curve, and you can see that GeoGebra named this curve A, which is okay, we can use that. Um, if you click over here, you can drag it around, you can look at different perspectives. So here, you can see it's, uh, I think it's pronounced like a Lisa Zhao curve. Um, those are pretty neat. That's when you have two trig functions with um, different periods. Um, and you can see you get kind of this interesting thing. Play around with that, I definitely recommend that. Um, if we rotate it this way, you can see one perspective. Um, where's the other one? Maybe this, this gives us another perspective. So depending on how you're looking at it, you get a lot of different uh, looks at this curve. So that's our curve. And now what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna make a slider. Um, so the slider, I'm gonna call it V, I, ordinarily I use T, but uh, I don't want to confuse things up here, so I'm going to create slider. And I want my slider to go from negative three, you can just type pi um, to three pi. And uh, I'm going to change my increment, I think, here, or the step size so that it's 0.1. So I'm going to press enter and drag it around, whatever. Nothing's really happening because nothing's linked to this slider yet. Uh, but now that I've done that, I'm going to create a, um, a point. So to do that, I want to take the current value of V and substitute it into this curve. And I can do that just by typing A of V. I'm going to press enter. And you can see the point is right here right now. But if I drag this, so I just click and drag, you can watch the point move around. The point is named A, which is a little confusing because the curve is also named A. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, click here and delete A and change it to P. And now it's called point P. So that's a little less confusing. All right, so we have our curve, we have our point on the curve. Then the next thing I wanna do is I want to create a radius vector. So a radius vector goes from the origin to the terminal point, the point that's actually on the curve, and that's point P. So I'm just gonna type vector. So vector, and you can see there's two options. One is just point. If you um, use this version, it just goes from the origin to the terminal point, which is what I want in this case. Uh, the second option, which I'm gonna use in a second, is you give it a starting point and an ending point. So that's gonna let us get off of the origin um, and kind of have our vector out in space. So, but right now I just want to use a point. I want the point P. So I'll press enter. And when you're building these kinds of things, you just constantly want to go back and uh, you know move things and see what's happening. I'm going to hit animate here, this plus uh, the play button. And then you can tilt it down and watch it happen. Uh, you can have it come straight at you and watch it. It's kind of less exciting that way. Um, but So you can look at it, see what's happening. So that's our radius vector. And now what I want to do 
is um, I want to create the tangent vector. So the tangent vector is pretty easy to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me just pause this. There's no reason to pause it. You could actually do it while it's moving. Uh, but I'm going to pause it. And so for my tangent vector, what I want to do is I want to point that, I want a vector rather, that has its initial point at point P. And then its terminal point is going to be at um, wherever P currently is plus A prime of whatever V currently is. So it actually is pretty easy to do. I'm going to say vector. And my starting point, I want to be P. And then the radius, uh, the tangent vector rather, I need to calculate the derivative of my curve um, so that I can substitute into that. So I need A prime. Um, but what I can do is just do P plus A prime of, and then I need to tell it it's A prime of V. Like I need to give it a specific instance. So I'm gonna press enter. And now I'm gonna let this, I think it's easiest to see what's happening in this perspective. So let this go. So you can see that it always looks tangent to the curve, right? So points in the direction of increasing parameter, um, which is why when the parameter was running backwards there, it was kind of looking weird. Um, and we can, we can change perspective, watch it move. It might actually be better. So let's do this. I'm gonna, I paused, I'm gonna click these dots, go to settings and um, click on V here. I don't know why it doesn't go to the one where you clicked uh, the settings from, but it seems not to. Click slider up here. And then uh, here where it says repeat, I do wanna repeat, but let's only go increasing. So hopefully it loops around nicely, but at least it won't uh, have a decreasing parameter. So it won't have that weird thing where it's seemingly pointing in the wrong direction. So we can see, yeah, and then it just bounces. Um, but that's fine. So we have our radius and our tangent vector. And so the last thing that I really want to do here, um, and this is just about exploring, um, I want to put on a, oh, I got a really, really straight on look there. Um, I want to put on a tangent line to the curve, also at the point P. So if you think about it, to write the equation of a tangent line, we're gonna need, or a line in space, I guess I should say. We need a point, I'm just gonna use the point P, and I need a direction vector. But the direction vector for the tangent line is just gonna be the tangent vector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go down here, and uh, it actually turns out, I can actually just type this. So I'm going to use point P, let's see if this works. Um, point P plus, um, the tangent vector, so a prime of v, and then I'm going to say times t. I feel like that, okay, it works. It kind of felt like it shouldn't. Um, so I'm going to press enter, and now our tangent line exists. What I was, I was more inclined to use a like curve, so I could kind of do things, but if you look here, after I pressed enter, it created a curve called b, and um, it, it knows what it's doing, right? It created a parameter. We're going negative 10 to 10, so pretty good. Um, and now what you can do is just kind of move this around, maybe change the colors of some things. I find the, the background is pretty stark white on this, um, but let's animate this. Let's go, let's go to the beginning. Let's animate it. It's gonna get a little choppy as you add more things, um, but you can see your tangent vector, your tangent line, um, and these are all really good things to take a look at. I mean, we talk about them when we're learning multivariable stuff, but if you can't really see them, you can't really figure out what's going on. Um, but there you go. All right, so that's how we can use GeoGebra to graph a curve, graph some vectors, graph a tangent line, um, all good things. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.